it, the next year, Alligator Woman came and, um, you know, you made that change from being the big band with the horns and everything to being more keyboard based and more streamlined, which really was kind of the way of the 80s. But you did it so seamlessly. You know, what happened during that transition, you know, from both a personal standpoint and an artistic sound standpoint? During that time, when you got big band, sometimes everyone in the band they would like to be. And when you have, I was just talking about this to some to my daughter actually tonight. She's uh, earlier today. She's she's a singer too, my eighteen year old, and she has a she just formed a, a, a group, uh, four other young girls in a group, and I was talking to her about how to be careful in a group because it's very difficult when you have uh, other members because egos and different things can be a big issue. And if you have talented people, you're gonna have someone who feels sometimes that their voice isn't being heard or their song isn't being recorded or certain things like that. And we've always put the best songs on a record, no matter who wrote them or who came up with the idea. And uh, so during that time, a couple of the members felt as if they weren't being uh, treated uh, creatively, their creative voices weren't being heard and they split off and did their own thing, you know, and formed their own band. And we didn't have any there was no hard feelings about it. There was, well, in the beginning, kind of like it was. <laughs> it was a little rough in the beginning. I gotta say, would you take those instances as you can use them or you can let it destroy you as a band? And what we decided to do was take a whole different uh, musical direction after that. That's when the group pared down to five members. And they said, you know what, let's experiment with a little rock this time. You know, let's get a little edgier. Let's let's revisit those days with, you know, that we had with the ugly ego and uh, sound. Let's, let's go back to that because like I was saying, we all grew up with, with rock groups, you know, Led Zeppelin and you know, we were all grown. We all grew up with with with, it, with that rock sensibility, as well as the R and B and the soul and jazz, the whole thing. You know, we were all we all had that, and we thought it'd be great to you know, let's do something crazy. Let's just do something crazy. So, Alligator Woman, we're like, okay, who the hell is gonna like this? <laughs> you know, and. It's a cameo song. And that's the one thing that we have, we, we've always kept in the forefront of whatever we were doing musically. This is a cameo. This is not, we can do anything we want because we're a band, we can do whatever we want. Let's just do it. And we didn't have any or, or, or expectation of anyone actually playing it or liking it but we knew it felt good to us because this was us. And that's where we presented it and that's where it went. And here, lo and behold, when we're doing the song today or if we don't do it, people are like, hey man, how come you didn't play Alligator Woman? Or, you know, what happened? You know, cause we, were ne we, we never had a concept of region or geographic, uh, ge ge geographical, things we just did the music that cameo does and i think our fans appreciated that because we never compromised on anything and we you can always expect something different okay you come from uh knights of the sound table where you have ba, 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 ba. you got all these horns and you got this big sound and then you come back down to like a punk act you know and with the next record so that's something that uh, was very 
interesting in that time period was very uh, uh, significant to our development going forward. Because after that, we never went back to a big band. Mm -hmm. Never went back. And actually, we pared down the horn section, and we would we would bring horns in to record in the studio. But normally, unless we were doing like big shows or something like that, we 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 eschewed the horns. We didn't we didn't we didn't have them. We we uh, brought two keyboard players in, and we do the horns with keyboards. And you know, financially, it was a, it was a a decision financially to do that as well. Uh, but at the same time, to get more of an edgier sound not so traditional sound well i can tell you the i mean the uh opening i mean just when just be um i just want to wait just be yourself uh yeah when that comes on man that is just i mean it's incredible and one of my favorite cuts of all time um with the yeah. band um you know when when that was first laid down in the studio i mean you guys must have been getting whiplash from that that was incredible that's a Charlie Singleton song right there. Yeah, uh, he came with that idea. And very strange, very strange sound. sound the sounds uh, were right then, you know, that electronic rock, edgy synth thing was big with us. And we exploited that and be yourself. I didn't realize how big that song was going to be, actually. I didn't really think it was going to do that well, to tell you the truth. I didn't. But uh, I mean, a video we did, I remember a video, we filmed three videos that on that uh, Be Yourself, Flirt, and uh, which was another big one. Uh, and uh, gosh, there were three videos we filmed the same time, the same day, because we all had the same clothes on. <laughs> 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 Shooting the three videos in one day, right? Hmm. And uh, it's like the game shows where they do them all like in one day. Yeah, you're right. So, uh, but be yourself was fun, man. That was that was fun. I just didn't think it was going to do what it did, you know. It's, and Sometimes songs are so bizarre that you don't realize that it's going to, this song's not going to do anything. But, you know, even now when we do it on stage, people love it. They love it. Well, and to me, Flirt was kind of one of those tracks, too, because, I mean, it had such unusual uh, keyboard sound and just kind of that bubbling uh, groove to it. You know, I, I heard it and I liked it, but then I heard, I, I never really thought they'd pick it up on radio like they did because mm -hmm. it was definitely out there but i mean just a killer groove yeah 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 flirt was one of those songs funky 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 deep in the funk that was flirt